I love the architectural drama and lush but slightly unsettling feel of a stumpery. It's something to do with the way the wooden structures are at the same time natural yet unnatural. The stumpery originated in Victorian England, coinciding with the British fern craze. It also coincided with the Victorian era outpouring of fairy tales and works of fantasy, many of which are set in woods and link woods to witchcraft, fairies and magic. This probably reflected the way British society had become more urbanised and industrialised, and people had a sense of being outsiders in the forest landscape rather than a part of it. The stumpery is a way of taking all the thrills and dangers of the woods and putting them in a safe, accessible space where hungry wolves aren't lurking in the undergrowth and the branches won't claw and scratch at us as they did to Snow White. The writer Thomas Hardy continued the tradition of the fairy tale when he gave a sense of woods as a place beyond the comfort of the familiar, a place where humans are the outsiders and must navigate the architecture of nature. In his novel The Woodlanders, the inhabitant woodcutters and orchard growers are both protectors and destroyers of trees. Hardy describes his characters interacting with the woodland landscape. They went noiselessly over mats of starry moss, rustled through interspersed tracks of leaves, skirted trunks with spreading roots whose massed rhymes made them like hands wearing green gloves, elbowed old elms and ashes with great forks in which stood pools of water that overflowed on rainy days and ran down their stems in green cascades. While humans are the outsiders of the woodland landscape, folklore tells how fairies not only inhabit the woods, but can pass into the very inner fabric of trees and deep into root chambers, passing through fairy doors to the arboreal sanctuaries hidden from human eyes. Fairies know the language of the forest in a way no human is capable of and can talk with any bird or animal. They may disguise themselves as deer to pass in front of humans unrecognised. If you find a feather, leave it as a gift for a fairy. While human eyes may not easily see into the places fairies dwell, fairies can, according to tradition or law, see into and inhabit our own homes and become offended if human domestic chores are not completed. These lines from Robert Herrick warn of the consequences. Wash your pails and cleanse your dairies. Sluts are loathsome to the fairies. Sweep your house, who doth not so? Mab will pinch her by the toe. Stumperies are about as far as you can get from thoughts of housework or domestic chores. Every wooden element is a unique structural counterpoint to the ferns, mosses and other woodland plants, echoing the wildness of roots, stumps and tangled branches deep in the forest. Did you ever read that strange, twisted fairy tale called The Tinderbox by Hans Christian Andersen? At the start, a soldier returning from war meets a witch who asks him to climb inside a hollow tree and retrieve her magic tinderbox. The tree leads to vast chambers with wealth, guarded by three dogs, each larger than the one before. That's the sense I get, looking at dark hollows in tree roots and trunks, as if something very intriguing is concealed within. Science tells us that trees are talking to one another through electrical currents, hormones and fungi conduits. Imagination tells us the trees aren't ready to give up all their secrets just yet.